welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will learn about the Pharmacy Technician Program available at Quincy College. The uh, weather forecast for the day today, kind of what you see is what you get. Hazy sunshine out there. It's 83 degrees right now. It should top off in the upper 80s later on this afternoon. Increasingly humid, too, as the day goes on, which means uncomfortable this evening with a low right around 70 degrees. It's kind of a repeat tomorrow with just a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm tomorrow afternoon. But again, warm and muggy with highs in the upper 80s. Then we begin what could be a heat wave on Wednesday. Day with hot, humid conditions and 90 degrees feeling hotter than that, even warmer toward the end of the week. Again, we have 83 degrees with some hazy sunshine in Quincy right now. Checking news for you today for the first time in 16 years and the only the third time in recent memory, there will be no preliminary election in Quincy this year. City Clerk Nicole Crispo says not enough candidates qualified for the ballot to trigger a preliminary which would have been held on August 29th. Instead, a final election will be held on November 7th. And Crispo is putting out an urgent appeal right now for residents to return their city census forms to avoid being placed on the inactive voter list. So, um, you know, we're, we're gonna move forward to November 7th. We're still um, taking people's um, second card for uh, the census. We appreciate everybody getting that back into us um, that, you know, they landed in the mailboxes a few weeks back and uh, we're working on them now and uh, we're getting a good response and we appreciate that. And if, if everybody can just sign it and, and fill it out so that we can update and have the best voter list available for the November election and then going right into uh, the presidential primary in 2024, which will be in March. So um, it's so important to get those um, census cards right back to us. Um, and we appreciate that. And, and it'll help you and everybody else at the polls on election day when they go in that they're not on the inactive list. It's not whether you vote a lot, and we understand those people that don't miss an election and, and we hate to do it, but it's whether you answer the census, the city census or not. Chris Bo says there will be mail in and early voting for the November 7th election and final details of that are still being worked out. There are contested races for mayor and the wards two, four and six city council seats, as well as three school committee seats. There is still a long way to go for the MBTA to be deemed completely safe and reliable. During our recent interview, Congressman Stephen Lynch said the oldest public transit system in the country is in the midst of a renaissance. You know, in our area, we, we have the earliest rail system in the country uh, and it shows. Um, I did have an opportunity to do a walkthrough. I'm very concerned about the repairs that are being done on the red line. So uh, I invited um, uh, Senator Keenan and Representative uh, Tacky Chan, um, and and we requested that the T allow us to observe the uh, the repairs being done in Quincy. So, uh, but they said you you have to come at two o'clock in the morning when the system shut down. So uh, uh, myself, Senator Keenan, and Tacky Chan, and 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 Senator Timothy went down into the tunnel uh, a few weeks ago, um, two o'clock in the morning and uh, and reviewed the repair process going on there at the T. It's gonna take a while, let me put it that way. Um, they've got only a certain number of teams that, and, and uh, equipment that uh, allows them to realign the tracks to get them back up to the normal rate of speed, which affects delivery service and, and on-time performance. Lynch said the federal government has invested a billion dollars in the MBTA and expressed confidence in new general manager Philip Eng to make improvements in the system, but said it will take time to complete. Three more promotions on the Quincy Fire Department. Recently, a ceremony was held in the Great Hall at City Hall this past Friday to promote Patrick D. to a deputy chief, Christopher Lewis to a captain, and Cody Daniels to lieutenants. Chief Joe Jackson told each of the men that they earned their new titles. 
Uh, gentlemen, uh, you're a, a talented group of individuals. The city's lucky to have you um, in these positions. Cody, uh, we were just talking uh, six and a half years on the job, and here you are getting promoted. Good for you. Uh, you know, I, I, do, I respect that. That's great. Good for you. And uh, congratulations to you, to your family, Chris. So, Lieutenant to Captain, the way that things will change for you, you're going to be in charge of a firehouse, yeah? You're going to find yourself in car two in charge of the city from time to time. It's a lot of responsibility, and I know that you're up to the task, man. You're a good guy. Congratulations to you, to your family dollars, right? Yeah. yeah. We've come a long way since being the new guys at Wollaston, yeah? <laughs> so it's going to be a pleasure to have you as my right-hand man, man, and I mean that sincerely. So, you know what? You'll be my fourth... Yeah, fourth operations guy in three years, so clearly no one likes working for me. <laughs> so, race for impact, buddy, but uh, we have a lot to do. We're going to have a lot of fun doing it, man. I love you like a brother. Congrats. Earlier this month, Ladder 4 was put back in service at the House Next Station for the first time in over 30 years. And back in June, there were five promotions on the Quincy Fire Department. A Weymouth man has been charged with trying to carjack a woman while she was waiting in the drive through of the Popeye's restaurants on Southern Artery in Quincy last week. Police say 25-year-old Marcelo E. opened the woman's driver's side door and tried to drag her out of the vehicle last Thursday evening. Police say the woman resisted. E. ran right across the street to the stop and shop where he was arrested. He faces charges that include attempted carjacking and assault and battery. Police say the woman works for Uber Eats and was waiting to pick up some food. When she was attacked, she was not seriously injured. Six players from this year's Quincy College Granite men's basketball team will continue their athletic and academic careers this fall at four-year colleges represented in the NCAA and the NAIA. Grant Smith. Tony Palavra, Isaiah Thomas Pierre, Derek Williams, Ethan Deliba, and Tyler Victor are all advancing on to the next level. A total of 15 players have advanced to four year programs under head coach Doug Scott since the 2017 2018 season. Last year's team finished 20 and 9 and earned a second consecutive berth in the NJCAA Region 21 postseason tournament. College President Rick DeCristofaro praised Coach Scott and Athletic Director Jack Raymer for fostering an environment where athletics complement academics, helping student-athletes succeed. That is our check of news for you today. Coming up, we learn about the Pharmacy Technician Program at Quincy College. That is next. Welcome back. We continue spotlighting the different uh, programs and courses available at Quincy College. And this month we're looking at the Pharmacy Technician Program with instructor Charlotte Hook. Nice to meet you, Charlotte. Thanks for coming over. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, you know, we often, I guess, the, think about pharmacy technicians from what we experience on the retail side, right? When we go into some of the chain drugstores, um, is it the person that we meet before we get to talk to the pharmacist? The per pharmacist is kind of in the back of the house and the technician is out front? Yes, exactly. Okay. Technicians are usually the first line that you meet at the pharmacy that might um, take your prescription off you or like uh, steer you towards over-the-counter medications. That's usually pharmacy technicians. Yeah, but we're going to learn that there's much more to it um, than just that, right? Uh, but before we talk about that, I want to talk a little bit about yourself and um, how you got into this field and how you came to Quincy College. Okay. Um, so I always say that nobody wakes up one day and decides to become a pharmacy <laughs> technician. It right. just doesn't happen. So for me, um, a very similar story. Uh, when I was in college, I was taking, I was on a biology major and one of the, the classes I was taking was pharmacology. And I thought it would make a lot of sense to get a job in a pharmacy, you know, some gas money while I was in college and then also have access to a pharmacist that maybe could help me with my homework. <laughs> so I did that for three years. Where did um, you go to school? I went to school in England at the University of Central Lancashire, oh. just like Northwest England. Okay. Um, so I got a job in a pharmacy and I just found something that I loved and I never left. Um, so after I graduated from school, uh, so that was a retail position. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a small community hospital uh, pharmacy. Um, 
and then when I moved over to uh, this uh, to the United States, mm -hmm. I then started looking for um, how to become a pharmacy technician over here, like what the equivalency was, what I would have to do to become a certified tech. And I did that, and then I was able to get a position in hospital pharmacy, um, which again, I loved. And I got to work my way up through all the different things that hospital pharmacy technicians can do. And then I just kind of kept working my way up. I became responsible for training technicians. I eventually became a pharmacy technician supervisor over sterile compounding technicians. Those are the technicians that make the IVs when you're staying in hospital. Oh. It might be you know, an antibiotic that you need that you can't take by a mouth, something yeah. you take um, through an IV line. So I became a, uh, the pharmacy technician supervisor of those technicians. Okay. And then just slowly worked my way up. I became responsible for recruiting and training technicians. Um, at the time, there was such a large um, demand for technicians that really wasn't met. Um, we have technicians that now work in uh, pharma companies um, and insurance companies mm. and lots of different places. So the technician uh, position became kind of on shortage and they anticipated that for the next seven years we would just see a really big demand for technicians and just not the enough people going into the field to meet that demand. So one thing that I thought that I could do that would help that would be to you know, teach a program to help technicians become certified. Okay. So that's kind of what um, led me to Quincy College was looking for a place to be able to do that, um, which I found here. What, what initially brought you to the United States? So while I was in the pharmacy, um, we used to get pharmacy students in the summer. So that would kind of free me up to come over here and I would work over here. I was working at like a summer camp in the summer. Oh. And then I would go back to school in the fall, go back to my pharmacy job. So okay. I would work over here in the summer. And then once I graduated from school, I moved here. Okay, to the Boston area first? Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So how did that trickle down to Quincy College? Yeah, so um, I, I knew that I could play a part in the technician shortage. I knew that I could help create technicians. Yeah. Um, pharmacy technician has such a low barrier to entry, like you don't need a two-year or a four-year degree to be a pharmacy technician. You need a pharmacy technician license um, and then you need some kind of training. But our program is a 15-week program. Okay. So for someone that has, you know, has left high school and is not sure what direction they want to go in but wants to jump into employment, yep. um, pharmacy technician is super ideal. Really? With a high school diploma? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. How long have you been teaching at Quincy College? Uh, this program, the first class was in October of 2021. Oh, so it's really new. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Yep, so it's did, a new it offering. Exist before? It did not, so no. Once again, you're breaking new ground, Charlotte. <laughs> yes. Um, so if you can talk a little bit about what the Pharmacy Technician Program at Quincy College uh, entails. Sure. Um, so the goal, the goal I have for the program mm -hmm. is that the students will leave either they are able to um, go straight into full-time employment okay. or they can take the pharmacy technician certification exam and then uh, go to employment. The difference would be if you are not a certified pharmacy technician, which is a national qualification, um, there are certain positions that the employers would prefer you to be certified, okay. so it might limit a little bit like what you want to do. But there's absolutely nothing um, wrong with going into pharmacy not certified, spending a year there and, build and working up to certification. Mm -hmm. But as I said, my goal for our program is that when you leave, you're ready to sit for that exam. And the exam covers topics. It's 60% um, medication. Well, you need to know like, about medication, what their brand name, their generic name is, sure. what their indication is, what are some risky things about it. Does it cause cough? Um, does it cause nausea, like those yep. kind of things, which is a lot for people that are coming with no frame of reference. Um, and then also this pharmacy law, which is really important for us to know, like how we handle narcotics, um, what the rules are about prescription dispensing, how long a prescription is good for, um, certain rules with cer that apply to certain medications. Those are things that we have to learn. So that's the law side of things. And then obviously patient safety. What would I answer um, versus what would a pharmacist be responsible for yes. answering, like those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. which I, I want you to kind of explain the, the difference between pharmacist and pharmacy technician, you know, and what the two what the two jobs entail. Sure. Um, I think a lot of people are familiar with pharmacists as a career path. Pharmacists, um, they go to school for six years. They go on rotations. So for me, it comes down to um, its clinical judgment. So what question would I be asked that um, I would have to go to school for an extended period of time to really be able to answer? So those are things like, can I take this medication with this other medication I'm already taking? Okay. That requires clinical judgment yes. that would come from a pharmacist. I see. Okay. So those are the kind of things, like e even as simple as, do I need to eat food with this medication? Can I store this medication in the refrigerator? Like those kind of things, those mm -hmm. require clinical judgment. They do, okay, okay. So that's the difference. That is the difference, it's yeah. A, that's a degree, that's a different degree, right? Pharmacist, you know, and as you said, different career path um, as well. Right. What is it that you love so much about being a pharmacy technician? You know, what is it that appeals to you the most? 
Um, I think it's the fact that we can, the, if you're, no matter what interests you, there's a space in pharmacy for that. Like yeah. we hired a technician that we hired that has um, computer science background, so he works in pharmacy IS, pharmacy information systems. Mm. We have technicians that are really into the compliance side of things, so they go into our IV rooms and make sure that we're um, following all the regulatory standards. We have technicians that really like to train people. Um, I really like to recruit. Um, I like to develop technicians and help them pick out their career paths. Um, so I think that's my favorite part about pharmacy is there's really options for everybody. If you really like to be in a crowded room with lots of people working, collaborating all day long, there's positions in pharmacy that support that. Okay. If you would like to work from home, if you like to work by yourself, if you like your own set of tasks, um, if you like to be with hands-on, if mm -hmm. you like to, you know, get paid for your opinion, like there's lots of different options just within pharmacy. Really? It never gets boring. Yeah. Okay. And then there's already s always so many like new drug developments too. I mean, just last week we had a really good breakthrough drug for that potentially could help with Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. from one company. Right. And then yeah. we also had um, the FDA approve the first over the counter birth control pill. Yes. Like it's, it's continuous in pharmacy that happens all the time. Yeah. So is continuing education required uh, when you're a pharmacy technician to keep up with, you know, the new drugs? So there's, there's two um, agencies that we kind of belong to. So just like every other, um, well, most other healthcare fields, we have a board. So we have the Massachusetts Board of Pharmacy. So to be in a pharmacy, you have to be registered with the Board of Pharmacy. Okay. Again, low entry, to, uh, low barrier to entry. The pharmacy technician initial application is a tra trainee license. Mm -hmm. There's no cost to apply for that. Oh. You know, all you have to do is get your form notarized and send a passport size picture in with your forms and you can have a one year pharmacy technician trainee license. And that really? can get you in the door of a pharmacy to start training. Okay. After that, we become registered every other year we have to renew our registration and then so that's to work in Massachusetts and if I I'm also registered in New Hampshire I but see. you can also be registered in Rhode Island Connecticut if I moved and went to um, you know if I moved to California I'd have to get registered in California okay. so that's registration um, there's no continuing education requirement in Massachusetts for that um, to be nationally certified you need um, 20 hours of continuing education every other year okay. and that has to also include uh, pharmacy law continuing education and then also patient safety so okay. we do have to keep up with our skill set there okay so you there are so many different types right as you mentioned pharmacy technicians um, you are on the clinical side at Mass General Hospital so what's the difference between I guess a hospital pharmacy technician and a chain pharmacy pharmacy technician yeah, um, there's definitely people that spend their careers in chain pharmacy. Yeah. They, you know, really enjoy that patient interaction. They like working with the pharmacists ah, okay. like that. There's lots of um, meaningful careers as a retail technician. Like I really enjoyed my time in retail. Um, I know that when I start my first uh, day with Quincy College students, yep. usually uh, they're always surprised to know that technicians even can work in hospital, but mm -hmm. we can really work anywhere. Um, in hospital, we might not see patients as much. Like mm -hmm. in my role, I really have no patient contact. The customers are, our customers are really nursing staff, so we work really closely with nursing. Okay. Um, so it just depends on what your, what particular role you're in. You know, we have like 200 or so, like people just on main campus in pharmacy. And those technicians work in many different areas. So we have technicians that work in clinical trials, mm -hmm. which is more of like an office type job where you um, are working with um, the medication manufacturers to get medication in for patient, patients that are in clinical trials. You might be working in the OR pharmacy. Um, we have technicians that um, prepare chemotherapy for the patients coming in to get the chemo for the day. Okay. Um, we have patients that we have our own outpatient pharmacy that technicians work in. Oh, we sure. We have technicians yeah. that work in an IV room making IVs. Um, so there's like lots of different opportunity. Yeah. If you could take me to through the curriculum of the pharmacy technician program at Quincy College, you know, or what the classes actually entail. Yeah, so we spend a lot of time talking about medication. Do we you? go system yeah. by system and all the medications they might um, they might uh, treat those conditions. Yeah. So they really do have to learn, um, you know, for just for like diabetes, there's you know, eight different classes that we cover. Do um, you need a chemistry background or should you be familiar with uh, chemistry or, or, or no? Not necessarily, Not really? okay. no. Yeah. I mean, uh, definitely, I'm sure it wouldn't hurt, but it doesn't, right, you definitely right. don't well, need right. it yeah. to, for the class. I mean, we're, we're not really learning so much the mechanism of action, just um, the concept that, you know, medications make our bodies have actions or stop actions and um, just the different ways that we can treat people okay. um, with different medications. Okay. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead That's with the okay. curriculum. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, very heavy on the medications. Okay. Um, we do a little math, which is not popular, <laughs> which makes me not popular at all. Um, so we do a little pharmacy math, but it's 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 I don't I don't really enjoy math, and I like pharmacy math. Yeah. Um, we heavy on the medications. We do a lot of practicing, answering questions about medications. Um, like spotting, you know, if the patient has this medication on their profile, what condition will you update their chart with? You know, those kind of oh, things. Okay. Yep. Um, 
we cover a lot of law because pharmacy is highly regulated. Sure. So we cover a lot of law. Okay. Um, patient safety. We spend um, a couple classes talking about how uh, we as pharmacy technicians are the first line for spotting errors and things that might be mistakes. Right. Um, and all the ways that we can prevent those errors from happening okay. and support the pharmacist in that endeavor. So um, I think I, I get lots of good feedback from the students that you know they didn't even know to be excited about it until they were there, and then they found something that they found super exciting themselves. And we have lots of great discussions around like, oh, my dad told me that he was you know this was happening when he took his medication. Mm -hmm. I was able to tell him, well, that's a side effect, okay. you know, things All like right. that. Sure. So real yeah. world experience, right? right? Do they actually do your students um, get to go out in the real world, you know, while they're still in class and, and work in a setting, a pharmacy technician setting? Yeah, they originally do. when we set the program up, one of the components is an 80-hour externship. Oh, so externship. Yeah. Okay. So they get to go out to, um, you know, with partnerships with different pharmacies in the area, yes. retail and hospital. They can go out. Uh, it's a great opportunity for them. It's kind of like an 80-hour job interview, really. You know, okay. it's a good opportunity for them to meet potential employers and see that side of pharmacy and see if that's like an area that they would like to, you know, secure positions in. Mm -hmm. The job market is so good that if they want to bypass the externship, they could really be hired in places. Wow. And fortunately, the college has really great career support too. Uh, they'll help put the students with a, put a resume together and prepare for interviews and things like that. So. Um, I had helped them get in front of people um, at certain hospitals they want to work at. Sure. We just had one student that secured a position at the Brigham. Um, okay. that, he was that was his goal from starting class on day one, so wow. I was very excited for him. I think he'll probably go to pharmacy school at some point. Okay. Um, that seemed like where he was headed. Yeah, talk a little bit about the, the, uh, the background of your students. Um, you know, they come from a, a diverse area, right? Yes, it's yeah. there's always, always very diverse. Um, some of them are um, you know, have already had a career path for a little bit and are looking for a change. Okay. I always seem to get quite a few medical assistants that are looking at maybe doing pharmacy just for as an, as an interest pursuit, really, because it kind of ties into what they're doing. Um, it's, I know that there's a lot of marketing from the college and people are kind of getting placed to try something mm -hmm. and then, you know, hopefully like pharmacies for them, but it's definitely a m multiple different backgrounds. People that have just left high school, yep. people looking for career change, people that have no healthcare experience, really? people that have healthcare experience. Yeah, it's always such a big group. Um, that you know, always a challenging part is to keep everybody at the same level. You know, right? Yeah, with all the different experiences. What can it's a certificate program, right? Mm -hmm. So how long is the class actually? It's fifteen weeks. Fifteen weeks. Yep. Okay, and and what? How many hours and what are the requirements for? So hours? we meet in person from nine to one on Tuesday morning, okay. and then we meet over um, remotely. Oh. From nine to one on Wednesdays. Okay. And then there's always homework. We got to study. Got to get ready for next week. Of course. Yeah. And uh, it's at the Quincy campus right now, right? But it varies from Quincy to Plymouth, is that right? Yes, okay. currently we have uh, two more weeks in Quincy and then September 12th, we're gonna start our next program over in Plymouth. Okay, all right. And what can a, uh, a graduate you know, of, of, a, of the program, certificate program, expect when they go out into the job force and, and look for a pharmacy technician job in terms of um, benefits, salary, uh, position, things like that? Yeah, it really just depends on where you're where you're headed. Okay. Um, a lot of people, um, I would say, like at, at MGH, for example, I would mm -hmm. say 50% of us are career pharmacy technicians like myself. Mm -hmm. This is the field I'm going to be in. Uh, and then 50% are, this is a stepping stone to something else. Okay. Maybe they're in nursing school, sonography school, they're, you know, this is their job they're going to work while they're in, co in school. See. So, you know, every May we like, lose a few people from our team that have graduated and we're happy for them and those, um, Having those students in definitely brings something to our team. Yeah. So I think it's, um, to answer your question, I think it's very similar to the students here. Um, it, it could be a stepping stone into the next program that they're going into. Maybe they are headed into nursing school. Um, it could be um, a stepping stone into uh, something they're already familiar with. Like I mentioned, if they already have like computer backgrounds mm -hmm. or if they already have backgrounds with building um, electronic health records and things like that, they just want to apply it to pharmacy. Yes. It's a really good string to their bow. Um, we've had people in class before that had clinical trial experience, but just not in pharmacy. So it's like another thing they can add to make themselves more competitive to get into maybe a pharma company. Okay. You know, companies like Moderna are like actively recruiting pharmacy technicians and people really? like that, yeah. So there is still a tremendous need and that has not been filled yet, so there's opportunities. Right, yeah. right. Um, how has technology, Charlotte, you know, changed the way you do your job? I mean, does somebody have to be kind of computer savvy as well? Yeah, I mean, I think that there is definitely a lot of technology in pharmacy, um, depending on the position. So sometimes we hire people in um, at the current health system that just have an affinity for technology and maybe we'll have them specialize in that. They'll become a tech specialist in automation. So if you like technology, you can go in that route. If you don't like technology, there's definitely positions that don't have as much. Okay. I mean, basic computer skills is helpful. Yep. Um, 
But the other great thing about pharmacy is a lot of it is, you know, is on, you can learn on the job. Yeah. This, this program at the college will like give you, did, you right? yeah, exactly, yeah. this program will give you like a really big jump into like something that you want to do. It'll give you more opportunity for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, everything that I know, like I, could have learned on the job, I believe, you wow. know, yeah. Like so what's kind of the average starting salary? It's gonna, I'm sure it's a question you get asked a lot. Yeah, I yeah. mean, at 10 years ago, it was like $10 an hour if you wanted to work in CVS or Walgreens. Yeah. And then I remember back when we were doing the fight for 15 and then the state became uh, $15 an hour minimum hmm. wage. Right. So I thought maybe that's kind of where we were going to stay for a little bit, but yeah. we've really exceeded that. Wow. We're already like looking around, I think like $20 an hour is like a reasonable wage. And I think if you apply to a few different places, you can, that's not, that's not difficult to attain at all. Okay. Um, and then it depends like where you work your way up to and where you yep. specialize in, you know, if you want to go to, you know, pharmaceutical companies obviously have lots of great benefits. Um, and great uh, compensation there too. Yeah. Just depends where you want to end up, really. Yeah. Okay. So you can really make a career out of it very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Congratulations on uh, being elected to the uh, board of this this new society um, in Massachusetts, representing pharmacy technicians. And I know you'll do great things in the future. Thank you. Thanks for coming over, show. Thanks Appreciate so much for having it. me. It's good to talk to you. Just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Very summer-like uh, this week, actually. Temperatures in the upper 80s this afternoon. Not quite uh, as muggy today as it will be for the rest of the week starting tomorrow. It's uh, like today, only stickier. Then we begin our heat wave here on Wednesday with temperatures in the 90s and feel like temperatures near 100 degrees. Thanks again to Charlotte Hook for joining us from the Pharmacy Technician Program at Quincy College. Thanks to our crew and thank you for watching. Friday here in the program, it's the Friends of Wollaston Beach. Maybe we'll go to the beach for that show. Meantime, check our website, it's qatv.org. All our latest programs are there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and more. For all of us at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great week.